What's up everybody? Today we have the high country again. It is the 2017 it's got the 6.2 and we're doing an AC compressor on this just to let y'all know um, there is a lawsuit on this apparently and if you keep all your receipts and all that stuff and uh, they once the lawsuit is settled they will reimburse you for everything that you have paid for so what we're going to be doing on this right here is i'm changing the compressor the belt and i'm even going to do the condenser on here because i got it as a kit a lot cheaper than i could as a um single ac compressor so we're going to be changing all of that out today and i can't remember if my kit had an expansion valve or not if it does i'll go ahead and replace that too but we should be getting all this right here done and it costs for about three three and a half hours to do everything so i'm going to gather some tools and everything but the first thing i'm going to do i'm actually going to pull the air breather off right here and then i'm going to pull i think there's a cover underneath i haven't looked yet but i'm going to pull the cover off underneath because i know we do take the compressor off from underneath the car and then we'll have to take this off but like i said let me gather some tools and i'll be right back so i went ahead and took all the other clips out of this and i just wanted to show one so i'm not doing repetitive stuff so you just get your trim tool pop that up get underneath there and pop it out uh don't throw it on the ground like i did but once you remove all of those there's going to be probably 10 or so of those that counted and then you can lift this up and out of the way and your condenser lives right in here and like i said it only calls for like an hour and something to do the condenser so we're going to I pull all of these little clips and stuff out and it lives right down in here as you can see so we're going to do that probably last and it looks like it does have these little like Chevy style transmission clips right there I don't know how well y'all can see those we just got to pull them up but trying to see how this comes out because I have never done one on this model Chevy before so it might be a little bit of a learning curve for both of us I'm guessing some of this stuff needs to come out I have to look at service data but we'll get to that in a minute I'm gonna go ahead and pull the breather box off I'll show y'all what that looks like so you're going to have a connector right here. I'm just going to use my trim tool to pull up and out. Then you got this connection right here. You should just push it in a little bit, push down, and it comes right off. Then this is going to be attached right here. If I can pull it out, there we go. And should have either 10 millimeters or Phillips flathead screwdriver, whichever one you want to use. But pull that off, and then you should have a hose clamp up here. And I do believe, nope, then you got one more of these style right over there. So let me pull this out, and then I'll show it to you a little bit closer once I get it out. You can see now we have a lot more room right here, and uh, I think I can get the compressor out easier from up top. Like I said, I've never done one of these on this model, so a little bit of a learning curve for us. And I do know this has the dreaded stretch belt on it, which I don't even want to talk about those because they're just a dumb design. But um, I'm going to cut this belt, but we still have to take the serpentine belt off. Here is your air cleaner. Like I said, yeah, two of these quick connects, a, a sensor, four of these screws right there to the air box and then one worm gear clamp right there get y'all up where y'all can see this a little better all right here it is ac compressors right here and the truck is still warm because i just drove it about 30 something miles back to take this belt off here is your attentioner right there 
going to have a half inch drive head right there and you just push it down and you should be able to pull the belt off so let me go ahead and pour this belt off and we'll go ahead and cut that one and then i'll probably show you all the um the parts i have now and then we'll start pulling this compressor off and i probably will go ahead and disconnect the connector i don't know how well y'all can see it it's right there it's just a safety clip push it back squeeze just like any other sensor so let me take both belts off and that connector off and then we'll start pulling the actual compressor out itself i got the belts off right here cut the stretch belt took uh where is it this ground clamp off or ground cable off just so we could feed it up through here a lot easier and it bolts uh right here i know you can't really see it bolts right there and it was a 13 millimeter then the compressor has two 13 millimeters on it one long bolt one nut i got the connector off and we're going to pull the compressor uh, out a little bit so I can get to the hoses over here and there's just one nut that holds that on but here is the nut that holds the compressor on here is the long bolt that holds it on and I may even see if I can pull this stud out I'm gonna see if I can move the compressor and get it out of the way without taking that out because uh, I just need to move the compressor down a little bit and then pull it out uh, there is one more connector i'm going to take off try to get y'all in here that is the pressure switch if i can get it out of the way there we go that's it right there pull this tab up and you should be golden on that one so let me see if i can pry this compressor down a little bit don't pull too much on this because that's aluminum and it will bend but i'm gonna push right here and try to pry that down so i went ahead and took this stud out right there is the one that the nut attached to the tip of that is a five millimeter i screwed it out then i went ahead and took the lines off here's your low pressure here's your high pressure line and it uses a 13 and they overlap each other the smaller line goes on the top, the bigger line goes on the bottom, and like I said, it's just a 13 millimeter nut, and we have the compressor laying down right here. See if I can show me pulling this compressor out. Set y'all up. Let me see if we can film this right here. Okay, there it is line attached to the bottom of it another connector well crap Let's see if we can get this other connector i did not see that one of course it's got a safety clip on it too Let me pull the safety clip off and get that connector off because it is being a pain in the butt right there okay took all of five seconds to do that <laughs> should have just filmed it and this thing is a little warm okay well we got it out and now i'm going to show you all the parts that we got so here's the new compressor it is a brand new one from murray and I will show you the part number in just a second. We're just double checking, make sure everything looks the same. And a little bit bigger clutch wheel, but that is fine. One, two, three, one, two, three. Connectors look the same. Same can style on that. Should be good on that. I'll show you the part number for this compressor and it did come with seals uh, ACM 204127 and this does take the YF1234 or 1234YF however you want to say it 
and I got four cans just to be safe. I just went ahead and got a whole kit because it was cheaper. Comes with it didn't come with the free. I had to get that separately. Comes with seals, the compressor, the condenser, and I believe this is our expansion valve. That's our compressor oil right there. How about that? That's for the YF stuff. Uh, and then we got this kit right here with it. It is an installation. Oops. Kit come with oil also. I think this is our expansion valve right here. I know I'm moving out all around. Yep, that's our expansion valve. Should be our dryer. More those. More fluid. And this should be our dryer bag. And this right here is uh what you call it? Our stickers saying that the thing will be void if removed and all that good stuff so uh where is the number for this i know i'm all over the place 7-4283 that is the condenser right there and they have like two different styles i think one with the cooler one without the oil cooler uh, on the radiator i don't know why i can't can't talk today but tongue tied a lot today i think it's got so humid out it ain't even hot it's only like 80 something degree, like 82 degrees but it's freaking humid as crap so let me go ahead and look up how we get this condenser out and then we'll start pulling that out so i got it figured out um you have to take this battery tray on this side if you have one this beam cross support beam right here you have to take that off of radiator support then you got this side and you take this one off as well the air box and then this bolt right here and once you do that underneath here there are three bolts 10 millimeters underneath here that you need to take off and this radiator support will actually come out now why they put it underneath there i don't know uh, this side right here is fairly easy you do have this cover you want to pull it back but the driver's side is a little bit more difficult because of this um, windshield wiper fluid because there's one right where my finger is going in underneath there but there's three there's one like right here here and there and on the driver's side I don't know how well y'all can see that nut up in there but that one right there is a little bit more difficult to get out just because it does want to hit the headlight so I use ratchet wrench on this made it a lot easier and then the last two things you'll have to do to get the radiator support out is take the uh, radiator bolts out and it looks like those are 13s as well so we're going to take those two off and this one right here and then the radiator support should come up once i get it out i will show y'all exactly where the bolts are on the bottom just so y'all can have a visual representation of that here it is uh, i got it upside down it was just like that but i'll flip it upside down and show you what the bolts are so one here here and there and you got that one and you got these three right there and then you should just lift it up and slide the driver side forward a little bit and it should clear this right here might not cap off of it but you'll be fine and then it should come right out I mean, I'm glad they made the support removable, but should have done a better job of doing that. Now, we got to pull this cover right here off. I'm trying to see, or not. I may have to take this one out. Probably both of them, because it covers both. Let me see if I can get a screwdriver and pop these up uh, 
All right, there's that. See if I can get down in here to get the rest of it out. I'm probably going to go ahead and take this battery tray out too so I can get to there's a line down in here I don't know how well I can see it but there's one down in there I'm going to go ahead and do it so I can get that line off get these two little clips right here off I call them Jesus clips because every time you try to take them off you lose them and you like Jesus <laughs> but you just get a pick behind them, pull them out, and then pull them, and they should come up, but it's just a little tight in there. I think the condenser will come out with this cover, so if it does, we'll be able to do that. But let me get these lines off, that battery tray out, and then the other line off, because it's probably at 13 millimeters holding those lines that go into the condenser as well. Finally, got the transmission lines off, got this um ac line off there's the low pressure now we push these little clips in when i will see them but you push those in and pull up and it will come up with it also there is a 10 millimeter down in there uh where the ac lines go that you can barely get your hand into but i got it out and now we're getting ready to pull the condenser out of here Hopefully I get y'all set up where y'all can see this. I'm dropping tools. There we go, finally. This one does have the transmission cooler on it. So let's hope and pray that I got the right one. Here it is. It looks to be the right one. So that's good. What I'm gonna do before I put it in though, I have to put the dryer condenser bag inside of here. Put the stud in that one. We have it right there, it's the stud. And then it comes with new fittings and clips on there. So I always keep the old ones because whenever you lose them, you wish you had more. I just about forgot to show you all this. Uh, this is the expansion valve. To take this out, all you do is a 13 millimeter right here. Take this off, your two lines come out. Make sure you change these O-rings or gaskets. I got the condenser in already, got lines hooked up, got new uh, gaskets on everything. You can see that's a new one. I just got to put them on that one. And to take this out, you're probably going to take this stud out of the middle and then there should be, looks like a torque spit right there, looks like probably about a T25, T20. Take those two out. And then it should come right out with no issues. Then the old one, or I mean the new one, should go in. Should have some gaskets with it, and should go in just fine. Um, let me grab torque spits, get this out. Once it out, once it's out, I will show y'all what it looks like with it out. That's what it looks like up inside of there, and they are T27 torque spit uh, heads on there. Here is the old one. I didn't have to take the stud out. So, but we do have to take the bolt off of those and don't be alarmed if they look rusted most of the times they are and the new valve come with new gaskets and they are already on there 
now it just got to throw it back in and it can only go in one way because it's got the threaded part for the stud on the outside and then it goes in with the valve actually pointing to the left so it just drained all the oil out of the compressor and filled it back up with this right here this is eight ounces it only takes 6.1 I put six in there because I know there's probably still some residual inside of it. So I just use like little medicine cups and measure out six ounces and pour it in there. You may have to turn it a little bit at a time to get it to go inside of it. But just you're going to do the same thing when you're draining it. You're going to turn it upside down, turn it, and some of it will come out. You may have to move it back and forth, you know, get it to drain out completely. But I drained out probably a little bit less than six ounces probably about five ounces came out of it but i did put six back in there so we should be good on that and like i said this right here is the stuff i used it is temp select hfo one two three four yf uh, i don't have a part number on here oh, there it is part number is five nine two three four or four zero nine one two three so I put the plugs back in it until I set it down in there just to keep any oil from running out while I'm sitting it down inside. Then before I actually mount it up, I will take these out, connect the line, and then uh, tighten that down. Then I'll put the compressor on. But also do not forget about this sensor on the back. I think that is one of your pressure sensors right there. And this is your clutch right here that activates the compressor clutch. I can't remember where I left off. Uh, I got the AC compressor on, the lines on, all the connectors on. I got the AC belt on. I've been fighting with the belt for about 45 minutes now. These stretch belts are a pain in the butt. I hate them. I don't know what happened to the days of good old tensioner on it, but I guess those are long gone. That's a rant for a different day. But I wanted to tell y'all how I typically do them. I've never had one fight me this bad. Like I said, it's been 45 minutes or an hour. On these, on the Chevys, I typically go behind the pulley where the uh, vacuum pump is and put a zip tie around it and turn it. And it normally goes on and walks on just fine. For some reason, it would not do. I had to use a pry bar, get it down in here and pull the belt out while I turned it. And it, it just fought me every inch that it went. But we got it on now. Uh, the part number for the belt is K040337SF. That is a gate stretch belt part number. And I'm going to put uh, links to everything in the description on this. But now that we got this on, we can throw this belt on. Go ahead and put the uh, breather back on. Connect everything on that. And then put the cover over top of the condenser. And then we can start pulling a vacuum. So I got the vacuum pump running now and we're pulling down vacuum and let it go for a while probably about 15 20 minutes and then we're going to cut it off and let it sit for about another 15 20 minutes just to make sure there's no leaks in the system but this should be good because i got all the air out of the system i got all new gaskets on it new compressor new condenser suspension valve all that stuff so like i said we're gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes and then we'll turn it off let it sit for another 20 minutes and then once i get ready to start putting freon in it i'll bring y'all back and show you how i do that we've been sitting for about 25 minutes and as you can see the gauges have not moved that's a good thing there's no leak in the system i got one can ready this only calls for one pound of freon actually so we're going to put about a can and about a quarter of a can in this third of a can somewhere around there so i got it punctured and now we're going to open it up okay i don't know how well y'all can hear it but it is going in a little bit in this can and right now the pressure should be about what the temperature is outside and it's roughly 95 degrees outside right now 
Now I'm gonna go in and crank it up so we can get the AC activated. So we can go ahead and uh, put the rest of the Freon in that we can. Putting the last little bit in here now. Like I said, we don't want much in here, just enough to equal it up to a, about a, a pound of Freon. Pressures are about 57 and 200. I'm gonna go see what it feels like on the inside because I do have the compressor running. Pretty cool now. Let me see about how much I have in here. Still need a little bit more, I can tell. And go up just a hair more. And stop right there. About 55 and a little over 200. See what that feels like on the inside. Oh yeah, nice and cool. But I did want to tell everybody. Turn this fan down a little bit. I did want to tell everybody on this right here. There is a lawsuit going on right now with this truck uh, with AC compressors. The AC compressors tend to crack. I know, I know. But the AC compressors tend to crack and that's what leaks Freon and stuff. So there is a class action lawsuit going on at the moment. So keep all your receipts and everything. I'm gonna give him receipts for parts and labor and everything so that he can get his money back once he the lawsuit is settled so like i said just keep everything that you have on record for this right here and then you should be able to get your money back if you have i think it's like a 2016 15 something like that to 2020 21 i'll look it up and i'll put it in the description but yeah they had a huge lawsuit on it right here so like i said just keep all your receipts and you should get all your money back for this but this is pretty much going to conclude the video. Like I said, take six ounces of oil, one pound of Freon, and we are nice and cool, especially for a 91 degree day. But um, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, saw something that I didn't do right, uh, let me know. I will try to fix it in the comment section like I tend to always do. Uh, I do have Patreon if anybody's interested in that because uh, I if whatever tier you go to i'm going to donate a portion of your subscription to a charity of your choice it doesn't matter what if you do subscribe as a patreon plus i will do like special videos and giveaways for everybody on there as well once i get to certain subscribers and stuff like that but uh, i'll go in more detail about that like on instagram and all that other stuff but if you liked the video please hit the like subscribe notification bell if you would because it does help out the channel and y'all remember torque this tight and y'all have a great day